everybody, this is Raul for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the great honor and pleasure of speaking with bassist and guitarist, we won't hold that against you, Jonathan Bearford. How's it going, everyone? <laughs> it's going, it's going. So, Jonathan, uh, starting from the beginning, it's always good. People like to know a little bit about your journey as a musician, as a bassist. How did you get started? So it all started with guitar. Um, it starts, obviously, everyone has a story of a parent who starts playing music and then, you know, they say it's in their blood. And so I was lucky enough to have, have a father who was really into Rush. And um, any bassist would know a little thing or two about Rush. Yeah. So picking up guitar, um, I always had a different separate side of me that always had an am amount of respect towards Getty Lee with bass. And while I ventured into all these different areas of guitar and found my favorite virtuosos in guitar and wandered off into lead guitar, there was still that aspect of me rhythm-wise that I was always curious about bass. And when I finally was interested enough to write my own solo music and pick up the bass, um, I didn't want to start slow with you know, easy blues picking. I, I thought, well, I started with Rush and I could do the same thing with Getty, right? And I was I was pretty wrong on my first year playing as if I could just pick up the bass and jump right to it. But um, it didn't stop me. And to this day, I would say that um, if it wasn't for Rush, I wouldn't be playing guitar and certainly wouldn't be playing bass. And so it's led me here. Got you. And are you self-taught or how have you been pursuing that? I am self-taught. Um, I am lucky to have a little bit of pointers here and there from my father. With if I were to learn a song or two, especially an oldie, he would he would guide me in the right direction. And I would say that he was kind of like the the motivational teacher that I needed. So while I taught myself how to learn tabs, I taught myself a little bit of music theory um, and anything else needed that I need to know about gear. Um, he was the person that would pick songs and pick performances that you'd like me to do, such as. My first live performance ever was playing Eruption to my entire class at school, which is not necessarily the easiest walk in the park. So um, I was lucky to have him along the way to give me that motivational push. But regard, especially bass, that was something that I, I had no help on. It wasn't until about my third year in that I had um, a little bit of technique taught to me from other friends. And I, I mean, that's still the case now. I have a lot of friends that are fantastic musicians and know so much about bass and teach me a thing here regarding my technique. So um, started self-taught, not done learning, willing to take any tips <laughs> from anyone along the process. Got you. Well, certainly the 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 life of, of music is an ongoing journey. And even people that have been uh, at it for a long time, and I, I remember I was I was talking to Rudy Sarzo from Quiet Riot and, and Ozzy, yeah. and he still spends a lot of time watching videos, uh, some of the YouTube videos, and picking up a pearl here or there. He goes, "Oh, that 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 looks like a good idea, you know." So I think yeah. I'll, I'll incorporate that. I'll try that. So you're you're constantly evolving, and I think anybody that believes that they've kind of come to the end, uh, or they know it all is it's 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 they're sadly delusional <laughs> because yes, exactly. there's ju there's yeah. just so much to know um i i've just finished reading a book about uh a luthier uh and he he basically was f uh, an upright bassist but he just dedicated himself to uh repairing and building uprights and it's it's a short little book but the amazing thing is is this guy worked I mean, he passed away at like 90 wow. and, and he was still developing things uh -huh. up until kind of the end. And oh, then he, he wrote on this book of, of tips to make your instrument sound better. And, and it was just kind of, again, the same thing where it's all part of a continuing journey at mm -hmm. any point, probably like when he was 60, he could have said, no, I think I've got enough. Or when I was 70, he said, no, I think I know enough. He was like, no, there's something else. There's yeah. something new. There's a different material. You know, he was he's incorporating Teflon tape into some of this stuff. And yeah. we didn't always have Teflon tape. So <laughs> things had to come along for him to do that. But mm -hmm. going back to your particular journey, um, guitar, playing guitar, playing bass are very dramatically different things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's really challenging for guitarists 
when they play bass to think like bassists. And it's it's especially if you play lead that you want to kind of cut loose and, and, and you know, play a whole bunch. And yeah. a lot of times with bass, because of the percussive element that goes with the melodic, less is many times more and and we go back to some of the famous sayings like it's not about all the notes that you do play it's about the spaces in between right and, right and how you're doing your timing how have you been balancing your guitar playing and your bass playing so that they, they can stay separate that's honestly possibly one of the biggest battles i have honestly i mean uh, uh when i write something it's guitar first it's mm -hmm. guitar driven and then I come in with bass and it wasn't until really recently until I learned how to be patient with bass. And sometimes I'll even start by writing all the fills and I'll just pick maybe out of like 10, I'll pick two or three that I really like. And then it's from there spreading everything out to be, to give highlight to other things. I, I had one of my, um, my producer who helped make Zion along the way when I was going too crazy on bass and a certain section he said is, um, are Poopy here to listen to um, John on the bassist or John on the guitarist? And I'm like, you know, you're you're kind of right. It's at the moment, it's really about the lead guitar, and and there's just moments where I have to remind myself of the patience of just letting something ride out and then picking a moment and really glorifying that specific moment because then people grab that as a moment instead of just five minutes of just ongoing um, sporadic moments. So. Um, it's definitely a battle, you know, from being somewhat of a progressive guitarist and then mm -hmm. picking up the bass and learning to calm down a little bit. But um, coming from somewhat of an influence of disco, too, and how a lot of disco bass will pick a line and, and stay there for a bit, that's taught me to kind of calm down a little bit. Sure. Well, and, and seeing that you brought up Zion, tell us a bit about the project. I'm going to make sure we have the video link for people to see. And sure. they can they can experience it firsthand. But tell us a little bit about the creative uh, thoughts and, and what you have going on with Zion. Yeah, of course. So I just starting off with my music overall, I usually write to a place or a color or something, a feeling I have. And at that particular time, I was coming back from the Grand Canyon and I just had this melody rolling through my head. But it was it was the idea that. I still wanted to keep going. So I went to the Grand Canyon and had this unbelievable experience of feeling insignificant to something so much bigger than me. And I just wanted to write a song that was huge. But I wanted to write about somewhere that I haven't been. Um, and the idea that that could be a metaphor for anyone, about somewhere you want to go. And then when you, when you finally get there, it's this feeling of being so small in comparison to everything else. It's just eye-opening. Mm -hmm. So... I wanted to pick somewhere I haven't been, which was Zion. So I, I called the song Zion, and to this day, I still haven't been, despite all the different places in the, in the music video. Um, but I picked a lot of different spots that I hadn't, haven't been at that moment that I was going to go there, because when I, when I wanted to shoot the video, I wanted to have the same feeling of being in awe. And I can tell you, any human that goes to any of these spots are, is truly in awe. But the idea of the song was um, to really feel smaller than every, every than the entire place that you were around and so I picked all these different spots that I saw in my head and um, that I thought that would do that trick and work my way with different spots starting at a studio in Hollywood with a green screen all the way to Antelope Canyon in Page Arizona which was just the most jaw-dropping experience probably I've ever had in my life so I started small with a little studio all the way there and worked my way back and the reason I worked my way back is the message I'm trying to get across is that even though you get to these places you don't have to stop and you don't have to feel bad that you're not there anymore it's amazing because it's a moment but it doesn't end there you can continue this journey to find specific places that just make you feel so so small but so big at the same time and I really tried to pick different locations that kind of like arced towards one and then you work your way back down so um, I write music in the same sort of way, kind of like an arc, but for once I just figured I feel like instrumental music needed a visual representation of that, and I I refused to settle with that one, so I, I went everywhere needed to show everyone exactly what I was seeing in my head and how how great it feels to feel small in comparison to all the beautiful things that you can see on this planet. Absolutely. Well, and for people that have not seen the geography of our Southwest and that that 
going from Arizona up through New Mexico, Colorado. I mean, you know, Cal- this is just the Southwest. I mean, yeah. That yeah. that whole chunk is so magical and so mind-boggling that when you see stuff, you go, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe that this is my planet." And so many times that they do. Uh, space movies or stuff. I mean, that is our planet still. They yeah. didn't go to space to do, you know, Mars or or they didn't go to Mars to do a movie. They did it <laughs> yeah. with with here. Yeah. And because of the 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 process, it's also something that didn't just turn up yesterday. I mean, if you look at the 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 time that human beings have been on the face of the planet, you know, these these formations are millions of years old. And they're ongoing in their changes with wind and water and the forces of nature influencing very subtly those differences. It is obviously quite easy to see, to feel small, not only physically uh, surrounded by this stuff, but even in, in, a, in a speck of time where yeah. we, we are, as, as mankind altogether, we are terribly small as compared to... Yeah, the face of our planet and these things that have happened here, mm-hmm. and so with that, I, I find, and, and especially when you have the opportunity to get involved with any of the Native American cultures, they too felt the same way, and they attributed a certain kind of magic. And I use the uh, I'm doing my air quotes here for people that are go, oh, you're going all woo woo on us here, dude, <laughs> but. You know, all you got to do is is hang out a little while in Sedona and you're going to get a little woo-woo because there's all of the, you know, there's, are we, is there energy? Are we feeling this? Are you interpreting this? And with the energy and the, the, with the substance of what you feel, there's music. And we had the great opportunity in Sedona. There's a, a guy who's in his 70s. And every day at 10 o'clock, he hikes up into one of these canyons and he climbs this rock that's just sticking up. And when he's at the very top of it, he plays Native American flute. And he's like clockwork. He's every day, no matter what. He goes up and he's playing for love is what he says. If you ask him, he's he's playing for for unconditional love for humanity but he's connecting with the magic and the music and the location. Mm-hmm. So it, it is totally inspiring. And it's and, spiritual over there. It really is. I can see why he does that. Uh, absolutely. You yeah. know, and when we heard it, 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 it was just like, Oh my gosh, you know, it kind of makes, <laughs> it makes the hair uh, on your arm stand up. And yeah. it, it made us actually, we ended up getting a flute as well. And we've learned to play some. And, because of that, that's so cool. Yeah, and we've gone into the canyons and we've played along. Now, again, I bass is still my main thing, but there is a magic to these locations that yeah. makes you want to express the music. And with Native American music, there's nothing written. It's all mm-hmm. kind of free form, flowing, whatever comes right, out in right. the moment. Um, so the 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 enormous value and magic of our southwest of our national parks uh something that uh hopefully as people view this uh today being a day where a lot of that those areas that are so important are endangered i'll put them i'll put it that way in the in the interest of being commercially exploited uh i can only hope that reason will prevail and we cannot damage such lovely places that inspired the the music that you've brought forward as well so um i'll get off my soapbox let's talk gear sure <laughs> tell, tell, yeah. us, tell us about your bass gear what, what's giving you your voice so a fender is my go-to mm-hmm. um a, a good jazz jazz master is my my go-to um and then um i still at the moment live i still run through um uh, my old um uh, jvm marshall but i play it in ticket because i have a di box that i usually record with that is my go-to regarding my um recording sound so i do my best to try to modulate that um to match that but i have a, a few different um i have a few different boss and line six modulations that can 
play with compression and give me kind of like a, a tube drive a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, I'll mix the compression, the tube drive along with the actual tube of the, the JVM that I have going. And it just gives me this really nice boost. A lot of people will just pick one pedal and go, that's my, that's my bass drive. And I, I no nothing wrong with that. I'm still always searching for better gear, but, sure. um, I really love mixing and I really love, um, if I have, if I have a compression, it's not my only compression. I will, I mean, I'll tone it down to four and then play with the boost and turn that up to like three and then throw a little bit of a tube drive. And then I, all of a sudden I have this really flat lin linear compression meets boost meets drive. And it just, it's like the perfect middle ground that could be done on a DI and through, um, through Pro Tools with a push of a button. But it's when you find that, that beautiful middle ground between all these digital compressions meets a nice warm tube. Um, that's the way to go. And occasionally, um, I've, I've run through an amp peg before too, and I'm, I'm thinking about upgrading as well too, but, um, I play around a bit and the, the inner guitarist to me is playing with a Marshall at the moment. <laughs> gotcha. Well, and you know, it is, it is interesting in that choice because I find that pedal wise, especially with compression and other things, uh, that really gets the interest of the guitar players, but especially when it comes to rock, a lot of bass players are working the whole pedal scene and, you know, they're, they're, they're juggling it around and, 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 you know, so it, the spectrum, there's nothing wrong with anywhere you decide to go. It's, it's really what's finding your sound, what's fitting with your music. Um, if you are laying down like Motown tracks, the straight sound of the bass may be exactly what you want, you right. know? Um, whereas if you're doing Rush, you may be looking for something that has a little distortion or a little a little wah to it or something, you know. So <laughs> you know you're coloring it. So that's that's very cool. Um, with the video, what what plans do you have coming up for the future? What what's uh, you've got to be working, I'm sure, on stuff all the time. So yeah, yeah, of course. So I mean, I think Zion was a an awesome kickstart for me personally to kind of define. Um, the, my solo brand of what I wanted to do. And um, before I was like with my first video, Revelations, um, it was just a kickstart to just get myself out there. But I'm, I'm currently working on some music and the idea is from Zion is it's it's kind of like instrumental music meets travel. I, I really see these places, therefore I actually want to show people exactly what I see in my head for, for numerous reasons. Even the the new one that you mentioned to me of, you know, these, some of these places are, should be preserved and seen and taken care of. And, mm -hmm. um, it's the same sort of thing. And people go, wow, I've never seen that place. And the music fits accordingly. So, um, now I'm interested in a travel sense or the prog person is interested in a prog sense. Sure. But, um, ideally I'm writing a song and, um, I guess sneak peek for my next video. I'm thinking of all these different waterfalls in Oregon and Washington. Okay. Um, I'm trying to write more of a earthy, um, 70s kind of uh, down to earth kind of feel for the next one, but um, it's it's an interesting way to go about writing music. Ever since I've released Zion, I've been trying to kind of put myself in a box of what it needs to sound like, which is which is tough, and it's not always a bad thing. But to to know exactly how something has to sound before you've even created it mm -hmm. is is sometimes a little tough. But but that's the direction. I'm I'm not sure how long I'll keep going with the. The music meets travel. I am interested in going to Iceland, which I've heard amazing things about, writing music for Iceland and all these different aspects. And, I mean, there's a lot of spots and glacier spots that won't be there very long. So same sort of thing. <laughs> I know. It's terrible. <laughs> uh, so I have a huge list of places that I want to write music for and music videos to go with it. I think a music music videos are a key um, key aspect of the brand that I'm going for. But um, we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm very open to it. Instrumental music is very flexible. And um, if as long as I'm playing, it keeps me happy. So that's that's the, that's the, what the future holds for me at the moment. Got you. And if people want to stay in touch and on top of what you're doing, because, again, once this video is out, it, it's it's up to right now. Where's the best place for them to look? A web website. Sure. So, I mean, I'm the most active with releasing any news or updates regarding any new music or any new videos or anything that you can look forward to on my social media, mm -hmm. especially with Instagram and Facebook. I do have a website as well, too, where if you just want to see the status quo of what's already been released or um, upcoming merch or shows, you can always go there as well, too. But um, 
you can always come and say hi to me on my social media as well, too. So Very either cool. or. Well, we appreciate you taking time to share this whole creative process, your story. Uh, fascinating and, and very beautiful video. We'll make sure that people Thank see you. that too. And, you know, keep us in the loop, especially if you find yourself up in the great Northwest. That's where we are. So we'll, we'll, have, to, we'll have to chat further if and when we find ourselves in the same geographic area. But for today, thanks to the wonders of Skype, we've had a chance <laughs> to get to know your story and all of this great information about you. So, folks, you've seen it here. Jonathan Bearford, Jono, yeah. coming to you live from Bass Musician Magazine. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it.